Yo, so today I'm doing something a little bit different that I've never actually done before on the channel, but I'm going to be talking you through my all-time favourite horror novels and just trying to give you a bit more insight as to what it is about the genre that I love so much and just more of an insight into my general taste. But firstly, I'd just like to say that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of motivating classes for people that are curious about discovering new skills, wanting to strengthen existing skills, or just wanting to explore their creativity. Skillshare's classes cover a really broad range of topics such as creative writing, film and video production, freelance and entrepreneurship, music production, and many more that will keep you inspired as you'll be introduced to a community of millions. Recently, I've been finding that I'm taking a really long time to complete everyday tasks, I'm just getting easily distracted, and I'm not utilizing my time as efficiently as I could be or as I should be at the moment. So I've been watching classes on Skillshare on how I can improve my time management skills. And the class that I'm currently watching is called Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less by Greg McEwen. And with this class, I've been learning how to really prioritize my time on what's actually essential and where I should be focusing my time and it's just made my days feel a little bit more structured and I'm finding that my workflow feels a lot easier. As Skillshare is curated for learning, there's no ads, so you can really focus in on your classes with no distractions. It's affordable with $10 a month with an annual subscription. And by using the link that I have listed below, the first thousand people to join will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, definitely check it out. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now to get on to the ooky spooky stuff. So the first book that I wanna to talk to you about is The Exorcist by William P. Peter Blatty. So this was a really, really unique reading experience or just a unique experience with the story in general because before I read the book, before I watched the film, the concept of this terrified me. And it's one that like before ever getting to know the source material, I was just absolutely petrified to go anywhere near. And I think that's just because it had such a big reputation and still does that it's like one of the ultimate horror novels. You know, it's like, it's definitely going to scare you. And what's interesting is that I actually can't remember now whether I watched the film first or I read the book first, but I know that I did both in quite a close proximity. But while I was reading it, this is definitely the most scary, thing to happen to me while reading ever. So if you don't know what The Exorcist is about, it's about a young girl named Reagan who starts to display worrying behaviour. And at first it starts out with just bouts of insomnia and just kind of like regular things. So her mother, who is an actress, thinks that maybe it's down to the fact that they move a lot. Maybe it's some sort of emotional trauma that's going on. But soon enough, Reagan's behaviour starts to really escalate and it gets really worrying because she starts emitting voices that aren't her own. She seems to have a lot of knowledge that typically a child shouldn't know about. She starts using a lot of vulgarity. She starts um, getting these weird lac lacerations and her features start to contort. And she's able to move her body in ways that you typically shouldn't be able to move your body. So clearly there's something just not right with the girl. While I was reading this, I was pretty early on in it at this stage. I think I'd just gotten to the Captain Howdy bit. But I was sitting on my bed late at night, maybe around 10 o'clock-ish. I had my blinds open, which I usually don't do after dark. I usually close them, but I'd just forgotten that night. And I was sitting there kind of getting into the spooky ooky atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, a bird flew straight into the glass on my window and the book went flying, I went flying, I've never been so panic stricken in my life. And after that experience, I was just like, I'm putting the book down. I think I'm bringing in some bad juju by reading it. And like all my associ previous associations with it were just like, I was just getting really into my head about it. It's definitely the most terrifying experience I've had while reading a book. The next book is The Case Against Satan by Ray Russell. So this is quite similar to The Exorcist, but it predates it by about 10 years or so. And it's the book that actually went on to inspire The Exorcist and went on to really just inspire the whole idea of possession. I generally always say that I prefer this to The Exorcist, but like I think The Exorcist has a better story, like a reading experience behind it. But this is definitely one that really sets a bar because not only does it just explore the idea of possession and just how disturbing that idea in itself is, but it explores the mental health uh, of the person who's been possessed. And I didn't feel like The Exorcist really delivered on that side of things, where I feel like The Case Against Satan definitely does. And again, it's very similar. It's about a young girl who starts displaying really odd behaviour and her father sends her down to the local priest to see if she can get any sort of counsel from him. And then she ends up stripping in front of the priest. So yeah, again, really disturbing behavior. But like what I love about this is the foreshadowing. I love the titles of the chapters, the 
use of imagery in this book is amazing. Like it is so, so disturbing that like every time I'd see the new chapter name, I'd be like, oh God, this chapter is going to be so much worse than the last one. But if you haven't checked this out, you should, because it's just, it's so underrated. And I don't really hear anyone else on booktube talking about Ray Russell's work, but he is definitely one of my all-time favourite horror writers. The next book is Ring by Koji Suzuki. So when people ask me, what's the scariest film you've ever watched? I always want to say The Ring because it is the one film that I watched as an 11 year old. I'm talking about like the original film and then the American remake. I watched both of them pretty close together. It's the one film that to this day I will still have nightmares from. And you know that you may think like, oh, that, I mean, that's not that great. But uh, I don't know. There's something about it that just stuck in my mind that even now, if I see the thumbnail for it on Netflix, I'm guaranteed to have a nightmare about it that night. And, you know, I don't really wake up in much of a fluster anymore because I'm so used to them. But when I was little, it, it genuinely terrified me. So what's different about this from the film is that it's actually a male journalist. But aside from that, the first book really sticks quite closely to the film, if you've seen the film for reference. But it's about a journalist who discovers that there is a potential alleged cursed videotape that once you watch it, you will die seven days later from it. And what I really love about this book is that when it opens, it actually opens on the seventh day for a group of teenagers who've watched the tape and they're counting down the time. And some of them are more concerned with it and others just don't believe it at all. But it just the description of what happens to them. And one guy is actually on a motorcycle when it happens. He's on a motorcycle in traffic. And just the description of him clawing at his helmet, trying to get his helmet off as he's going through whatever is happening in his brain. It's just so disturbing. And it's described as a supernatural thriller, which I'd agree with. But definitely when you read more of the series, there's like um, there's two more books and then there is a, a book that accompanies them basically. But it definitely turns more sci-fi and I think the sci-fi element just brings this whole series up a notch because at first you're thinking, oh, it's just a paranormal story about a dead girl down a well. No, girl, it gets so deep and I just feel like no one freaking knows about it and I haven't been able to have like proper discussions about like, but what did you think about that? And what did you think about the plot twist and all this kind of thing? It's just no one freaking knows. So if you have the ring, give it a read because it's bloody brilliant. And if you want something that's quite spooky, I'd say this is one book that I feel is very spooky. So the next book that I have is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now, if you follow me on here for a while, you know that I tend to bring up Shirley Jackson quite regularly. What I love about The Haunting of Hill House and about Shirley Jackson's writing is like, first of all, the emphasis on mental health, particularly with this novel. Also, the way that Shirley Jackson can really just write in a creepy, spooky atmosphere. And I find myself getting tense, you know, as characters are opening doors to rooms like I, I can feel the burn in my shoulders as I'm anticipating what's going to be behind this door, what's going to happen now. Something that I really loved about this novel is that the way she wrote about the air, like as if the air was a, a living thing, purposely trying to wrap itself around the characters. I just thought it was so creepy and I, I just thought I'd never seen that before in a horror novel. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Shirley Jackson isn't that scary. Like, she isn't that scary. Like, you're not going to get any jump scares from any of her books. But I don't think you're really going to get any jump scares from any books in general, you know. But it's more so the idea that she's bringing forward. And I'm not really one for ghost stories. Like, I find ghosts probably one of the least interesting aspects to horror. And I generally try to avoid ghost stories because I just don't find them that interesting. But this is like one exception to the rule that like I always think about. And I mean, it's been, geez, it's been about like maybe seven, six, seven years since I've read it. And I can still remember like my favourite pages and my favourite paragraphs that really made such an impact on me and my own like personal writing and how I write like song lyrics and poems and all that kind of thing. I, I was able to pull a lot just from this one book. I really, really appreciate Shirley Jackson. It's really unfortunate though because I did not like the um, Netflix adaptation. I mean, I like the Liam Neeson film and stuff, but I really didn't like the Netflix adaptation. I just thought it was too much. And uh, I don't know whether I should try The Haunting of Bly Manor now, because I know that's a, on a retelling of The Turn of the Screw. And I love The Turn of the Screw, but I'm just like, oh, spooky children in an old haunted house. Ugh. So when I came up with this video idea, I knew that I'd have to include a Stephen King novel in there somewhere. And just based on my own personal fears, the one that really fits this is Pet Cemetery. 
So Pet Cemetery is about a family that moved into a new house, you know, your stereotypical horror setup. And there's a local pet cemetery to them, but a neighbour warns them not to be letting their kids play there, that the place is cursed, and you, you just don't want to be going up to this pet cemetery. And ultimately, the family cat ends up passing away, and the father of the family decides, listen, I'm not going to listen to that gobbledygook that the neighbour is spouting on about. I'm just going to go up there and bury the cat there. The cat ends up returning to the house, but it's not really the same cat. He's 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 come back, but he's different. So that's like the whole setup to this book. There's two reasons why I picked this. One is that I think when you're presented with what the family has to go through in this, you naturally want to say, why are you doing that? Are you crazy? Like, why would you do something like that? But I think if you're more maternal, you certainly are more empathetic to what the family has to go through. And if you were in their shoes, you'd probably do the same thing, regardless of what the outcome was going to be. Um, so that's one reason why I really love this. The other reason why I picked this is because I'm someone who suffers from night terrors quite frequently, usually in times when I get very, very stressed. So, you know, at the moment, (laughs) but, um, this really plays into what my night terrors are actually about. And not that this inspired my night terrors or anything like that, because I was having them before I ever read this book. But really when reading this, I just thought like, oh, this is just extra creepy for me because like, it's one of my all time biggest fears. Like one of my like irrational fears is basically everything that is in this novel. So yeah, if you want to be creeped out by like undead things, you should check this one out. (laughs) On the topic of irrational fears, I thought I would continue down this path and talk about Songs of a Dead Dreamer and Grimscribe by Thomas Ligotti. Is it Ligotti or Ligotti? I feel like I always said Ligotti, but I think it's actually pronounced Ligotti. So sorry about that. (laughs) This is a horror short story collection. It's probably one of my all-time favourite short story collections because it is so strong. Like, it's pretty much every story in this is an absolute banger. Like, it's just, it's really, really creative. And this explores a lot of cosmic horror. So if you're someone who's into cosmic horror, you should definitely check this one out. If you've heard me talk about this before, you'll know that the first short story in this really isn't that great. And I feel like it's weird to even have it in there. And I feel like it's weird to have the book open with that particular story because I feel like it's setting you up to not really enjoy the rest of the stories the book has to offer. But once you get past that story, you are just in a world of pure mystery. So like if you're someone who's into the Twilight Zone or like Black Mirror and all that kind of stuff, this is kind of one of those um, short story collections where I felt like every short story had a really predictable ending when I started it. I would think, oh, this is, I know where this is going immediately. And typically by the end of each story, I would just be left absolutely gobsmacked because I just couldn't predict the way the story was going to twist and turn. And I was just so wrong about my initial assumption of how the stories were going to end. And like, the thing is, is that when it comes to horror, horror can be really cliched. And that's why a lot of people kind of frown upon it uh, because you know it's just it's got that kind of reputation but I think that if you're looking for like a really like a just way better version uh, I'm, I'm getting freaking blah, blah, blah. but also the reason why I picked this is that there are two things in it that I, I really dislike and they're basically the same thing so one is that it talks about mannequins quite a lot And the other one is that it will talk about ventriloquist dummies. So I've always had somewhat of an irrational fear of ventriloquism dummies. Not that I'd run screaming from a room if someone presented me with one, but they've always, just the look of them, the aesthetic of them has always really creeped me out. And one of my mum's friends used to have one when I was younger. They would play tricks on me where I'd go to the toilet and I'd come back and the dummy would have been moved. And they'd say, oh, he did that by himself. So yeah, initially, yeah, I I don't like them. They creep me out. The next book is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. So I'm a huge, huge fan of like apocalypse style, end of the world horror. And this just filled that void in my life. I don't really typically read a whole heap of it. I tend to watch films based around it more often. But um, I Am Legend, like I've never seen the film adaptation. I don't particularly care to, to be perfectly honest. But the the book just was superb for me and my own personal taste. It just ticked every box that I have for like what my expectations of this type of horror to entail. So this is about a man who is living in, he's kind of living in this house, but it's more like a base. And we discover that everyone else on earth supposedly, allegedly has died off. But 
the creatures that are in this are they're basically like vampire creatures but this is the book that went on to strongly inspire the zombie genre so they kind of are zombies they're, they're kind of a hybrid between zombies and vampires really this man is left to basically you know fight for his life and fend for himself and you know it's one of those stories where he's got a dog so if you're like you're into any of those kind of you know a man and his dog sort of stories this is definitely it I definitely need to read more like apocalypse style horror um it's something that I'm really really into like I said there's no particular reason for why I like this sort of thing um it's just something that I've always naturally just gravitated towards not that it scares me horribly but it just fascinates me and I will naturally just want to pick up a book by it so if you have any recommendations that are quite similar to this let me know so I couldn't get through this video without referencing my solid lifelong love for anything extraterrestrial related. So I'm going to be telling you all about The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. This is the first H.G. Wells novel I ever read and I'd heard some iffy things about it at the time. I know some people really struggled with the format of it. It's kind of like a journalistic style of writing. It's basically about an alien invasion and what's really interesting about this is that if you, if you know anything about it is that it was read out years and years and years ago as a radio play. And people at the time thought it was a real broadcast and they thought the world had been invaded by aliens. Like that's how in the moment this story is really written. So I think that's, I mean, obviously it wasn't it wasn't pleasant for the people at the time, but I think that's kind of, you know, it's a funny thing to laugh about now. I have always loved invasion stories. I don't know why. I, like it's always creeps me out because it does scare me. Like if that happened, I genuinely wouldn't know what to do. But the fact that in this particular story, the invasion is so ins insidious that like, it's just, it's just really creepy. And the fact that they're trying to like reclaim the earth and what they actually end up doing to the humans that they're destroying. It's so good. It's so messed up. And there's a couple of scenes in it that are just really haunting. Um, but yeah, this is like, again, one of my all time favorite horror novels I, I it, and it genuinely does kind of creep me out because I, I don't like anything I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that but it, it I, I I don't I don't like any of that kind of stuff really like I love it but I don't really like it and then finally the last book that I want to get to is one that I've been talking about quite a lot recently so if you're sick of hearing about it I apologize but it is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieleski. I have gotten a lot of comments on this book recently because of my book review that I did on it. And I've been getting comments from people saying, I don't know what the big deal about it is. It seems to be just a bit of a gimmick with the formatting of it. I don't see why it's so scary or why people really hype this book up. But I think the reason why I loved it so much is that it specifically plays on some of my own personal anxieties. I feel like it tends to more so hint at things rather than to show you or be very explicit about certain things. So there really isn't that, like there isn't like loads of gore to it or anything like that. There's no graphic depictions of people being eviscerated by monsters or anything like that. So maybe that's why people are disappointed when reading it. I wasn't getting necessarily really creeped out while reading it, but it's more so when I was thinking about it after I'd read certain sections or lying in bed at night, like evaluating the information that I'd taken in for my last reading session that I really kind of got unnerved by it. And it's one of those books that tries to like push you away as much as it tries to draw you in. So it's, it's just a really interesting, unique uh, experience. But this is like the last horror novel that I rated five stars. So that's why I had to make this list. But yeah, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, this is about a family that move into a house yet again. And it's meant to be their perfect house until one day a door appears in their house that leads into a darkened hallway. And the father of the family, uh, Will Navidson, becomes absolutely consumed with this hallway and finding out the mystery around it. And I think one thing that was really stuck out to me was the idea of obsession and the idea of the, the paranoia that this book really emits. And um, especially the fact that it does delve a lot into various characters' mental health. Um, I think that's something to be talked about, especially when it comes to the horror genre. My own mental health deteriorating is something that really scares me because it's something that I have suffered with for the last like 15, 20 years or so. And that is a real genuine anxiety. Like we're not basing it in the paranormal. We're not basing it in cosmic horror or anything like that. That is like an everyday fear. And it's something that plays on my mind quite a lot. I think that's why this book really did resonate with me as much as it did and why I enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, 
and why it was more effective on me horror-wise than maybe it would be on other people. So maybe that explains my liking for this a little bit more. Those are all the books that I feel really accurately depict my taste when it comes to horror. This isn't a definitive like top 10 best horror novel videos of all time. This video was really just to show my own personal taste and my own personal fears when it comes to what I like to read and um, I hope it's just given you a little bit more insight as to like how my mind works when it comes to horror. So anyway, I'll stop blathering on, but thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you guys have any recommendations for me based on the books that I've shown in this video, please leave them below, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye!